Hello everyone, this is Zufar and I'm glad that you're joining me uh, at the, uh, the next session of the uh, live painting tutorial. It's definitely not exactly live, but the recording was live right on site. And for some of you I already uh, mentioned that we're going to work on a scenery uh, at the mooring in Southport, Fairfield, Connecticut. Great place. Uh, I've been trying to combine, combine the video uh, for you today. I did a recording a few days ago uh, and we'll be able to do it from uh, different uh, pieces. Uh, another thing is that uh, first idea was to run it a little faster and um, but then I reconsider it. It's better probably to run it at the regular pace. So today's video is going to be for an hour and I think like 20, 24 minutes. That is why I will try to talk not much um, at the at our beginning, right at the end. There is only two things I would like to announce. Of course, as usually this video pres presented to you by projectconfidentartist.com. It's uh, running not at the full uh, strength. Um, I work on it and you can he you hear that from week to week uh, but I know that happy day will come when I will have my setup the way as I really see that. Also if you are watching this uh, channel but not subscribed yet I'd be really happy if you subscribe and at the end of the video sometimes I forget to remind you but if you like the video please uh, give thumbs up. If you watched before uh, I'm sure this, uh, my channel before, I'm sure that you will like today's session as well. So um, I would like to say about two things. Uh, I already have dates for my workshop. One of them will be in well-known Chesapeake uh, Fine Art Studio. Uh, that's on Kent Island, not far from DC and Baltimore. And uh, many big name uh, artists uh, teach and teach there before, taught there before, and I'm going to teach there. And the dates are November 9th uh, and 10th. So we'll be uh, working on how to implement your plein air experience and do that uh, without uh, disappointment, frustration, and then also to combine it with your studio work. So organically, uh, there would be like one uh, step um, after the previous one. So with all your knowledge, with all your gentle but steady improvement of your skills. Also, I'm going to teach on uh, September 14 to 15 in Connecticut. Uh, after this uh, webinar, I'm going to put the dates below the video. Please follow me. And I think we are going to start watching video now. Also, I would like to let you know uh, that uh, during the day when I was did recording, the uh, sound, I mean, the noise was quite significant. And uh, especially from wind, I will try to give my comments as good as possible. Of course, as usually, I will try to watch uh, where special live uh, chat uh, members are coming from. And that's, you know, it's a regular thing, but it's a lot of fun to know that people are watching it from East Coast, from West Coast, sometimes from other countries and even a uh, different continent. Okay, I think we can start now. Uh, I know the video is going to be long and, um, and I think it will start right from here. So it's beautiful view uh, in Southport, as I mentioned earlier, and I'm sorry for the noise of the wind. It was getting actually a little uh, worse and worse. And, um, and uh, this is the place which has all those sparkles and looks absolutely great. That what I'm going, uh, this is what I see in, uh, in my view. And um, I'm going to do drawing before I know what exactly uh, how it will look like. Uh, I'm doing a little sketch and I'm uh, still not sure do I want to do it vertically or horizontally. I have preference to do it vertically and because that's uh, kind of, it's, it's more helpful on one side and also it's more convenient for you to see it um, because the, uh, the, Unless you're watching and you will watch it somehow on Instagram, usually the uh, screens are horizontal and it can be split to two or even three sections, uh, mainly of vertical format. So, uh, as you see, there is a strong uh, shadow uh, 
of um, of the green and behind those um, whatever uh, green grass like saw grass or uh, there is a golf cart uh, course I'm not trying really to represent that golf course and the fancy houses uh, right on the hill but it definitely will be good background uh, because we're looking at this view uh, as a contour against the light so let me check uh, do we have people in chat in is if uh, my uh, stream is going uh, live is it as they call it healthy so and as many of you know of course some of you subscribed and uh, and know how to uh, find my videos but all uh, because if you go to my channel then you see what's happening live and I see uh, it looks like yes Richard hi from Australia Wow Karen uh, I am so glad to see you here from New Jersey Hoboken and uh, Frank uh, my uh, student from Connecticut I'm glad that you're watching it and uh, Joan from Milton Pennsylvania you are and Richard uh, from Hudson uh, New York so all uh, well familiar names I very uh, thankful to you for your loyalty uh, that you're following me constantly and um, looks like you're learning uh, a lot and your kind uh, words in your comments and in emails and even support uh, through PayPal which you've been sending uh, quite a number of times to me that was uh, I mean that was precious thank you so much so yes and let's uh, see back what's happening on our screen and what's happening here is uh, in fact is uh, uh, this is enough for a um, little sketch and as you see I defined vertical borders and uh, I will tone my canvas and start uh, painting actually canvas which I used is already toned I did that at home I really find that the canvas is toned in advance I just have variety of them some of them are kind of, kind of on warm side some of them are like a neutral side could be gray some of them are darker and uh, this is dry toned canvas and that was very um, I really liked especially when I apply uh, blue paints and I want to keep their clean um, because it's quite easily get desaturated with mix of any browns or um, cadmiums or even of course uh, burnt sienna and so on um, if it's dry that's even better of course as you see it's toned unevenly I could put it upside down depending what composition is and uh, so this is how I started uh, my uh, my video at this uh, moment I mean uh, my um, my painting process at this moment I will try to make a view of my uh, image a little bit uh, bigger just give me a few moments again even though it's not a live painting at this time it's not studio but I hope you enjoy that it's happening uh, right outside and I did this recording uh, on beautiful day we couldn't be able to do that today because we have a very gray and a raining day yesterday and today as well my palette as you see is quite limited it's pretty much the same on our previous sessions and um, and as you see since I tried uh, a little earlier my my palette I'm glad that um, I mean not my drawing I, I'm glad that I already kind of knew how to draw it at this uh, moment so let's try a little bit bigger image and I think that may work a little better for you and my boats I decided that uh, my boat which is on the right side I will uh, cut it off will follow that tradition which came uh, to, Europe to European art mainly from uh, Japanese art in the end of 19th century when uh, some objects been uh, chopped off uh, and that became a kind of now uh, uh, then since then in European art it became kind of accepted way of uh, doing composition of course in vertical format having two boats I would have to put them centrally and I try to keep some dynamics of my composition having 
like main boat in the, on the background a little bit to the left and this group of uh, two boats to be on the right to have some sort of uh, diagonal and then uh, moving to the top we have a pretty much a vertical yes vertical mast of that yacht I see also uh, Svetlana uh, from Bristol, Connecticut, saying hi. I'm. I mean, I still cannot. Yes, I haven't met you in person, uh, and uh, I think we should do that maybe this summer. And also Ellie from uh, Alabama. Wow, that's that's great. I'm glad that you joined us. Um, yes, welcome to the group. <laughs> If you want to know what's my palette and I'm working at this moment with very uh, basic uh, mixes so I'm using of course titanium white in my left corner when my, uh, when my palette is a little bigger I put uh, two uh, whites one on the right one on the left and I'm trying to keep as long as possible one a pile of white uh, intact or to save it specifically for uh, some colors which are very gentle uh, blues for sky or maybe for some water reflection and um, but with this a small palette and inside this box is about 10 inches by a little more than 20 or about 20 uh, also had questions uh, again where I bought this uh, box this box doesn't get sold exactly as this I did some modifications of it otherwise I bought it as a paint box by creative mark on uh, Jerry's art drama it did cost me just 15 bucks and uh, I ordered a couple of these boxes and a couple other little things and I had a free shipping uh, which is great and also another winter Newton but um, another company uh, Julian, uh, Julian, which produce easels. So uh, the same size, pretty much the same design uh, box comes as a paint box for watercolor easel. So that would work as well. What I like about this box, it's no problem to have it like with a palette placed to uh, my uh, refrigerator and keep my paints uh, off uh, oxidation and um, getting dry and having that uh, kind of uh, film on top of each, uh, each each paint which uh, usually is one of the biggest problems if you didn't paint for a day or two uh, specifically for some uh, paints cadmiums usually and the titanium for quite long uh, stay uh, wet uh, but let's say some paints even like ultramarine blue uh, get that film and then uh, sienna's uh, quite easily get that uh, uh, film on top of it and if you go with more expensive ones it becomes like oh um, I've been generous with paint and we need to be generous with paint on our palette otherwise you have no time during the painting like adding over and over and over I mean it's, it's just a natural process you have more paint on your palette than you need and uh, but then what happens is um, you like you feel guilty that you are wasting so much paint especially if it's expensive especially if you buy brands like the old Holland or other uh, big uh, big names I hope uh, noise from wind doesn't bother you a lot and if you want to know what uh, paints I use of course titanium white um, And also, uh, if we go from left to right, what's right uh, under corner of this uh, picture is uh, ultramarine blue. Then I have a cadmium, not cadmium, a uh, cobalt blue. Then I have cerulean blue. Then I have uh, actually uh, Russian paint, and that's uh, like cool green uh, light. And then I have. Um, raw sienna then i have cadmium uh, yellow medium then cadmium lemon yellow cadmium orange and then on the right side i have a cadmium red uh, light and also uh, alizarin uh, crimson so these are all my uh, paints
yes if this video is too long uh, later on if you want to watch it again of course you probably know I think uh, maybe a year ago less or more than that uh, YouTube introduced a way of changing speed of the video without a changing pitch of the sound so like if you go faster with your video I'm not going to talk like a chipmunk <laughs> or if you want to watch it for any reason slowlier so it's not gonna sound like a Godzilla so um, I'm glad the quality of the video which I got here is, is, is good and uh, doing background good value even though I'm doing this video for uh, you to watch it and it, I I mean on my workshops I try to explain that your field study is supposed to be a field study not painting as a finished painting it has its own goals uh, bigger shapes not forgotten anything which will be in your uh, possibly bigger uh, master painting At the same times values and colors edges texture uh, perfect shapes lines is not a, uh, a goal uh, to reach over there but if it happened that uh, I mean that we're doing this kind of lesson um, I will try to be more careful with lines I want at the end or if, especially if you are kind of watching it for entertainment and you of course not in my system of four steps of painting it you want your um, efforts to look as something which could be framed maybe given or uh, can be tracked later how much you I mean you've been painting with me uh, with Zufar been encouraged by his uh, YouTube classes and then um, you can see progression so because I think when you go uh, by steps step one two three and then uh, main painting as a step four you would see you would have those four uh, steps seen together but here since we're covering just step two uh, field study in oils uh, I really uh, try to and uh, enjoy with you more extra time uh, being more careful with lines uh, texture and then at the end we have something which looks like a art which worth its frame <laughs> okay so um, this is the way as usually uh, I mean we're pretty much doing at this time block in and um, if you are the person who watched it first time I should say that I'm working on five by seven um, cotton dock uh, a regular uh, canvas and usually on canvas which we which I work on I usually kind of like polish it even just taking something like a paper towel like a bounty or like what, what we like uh, at the shop um, like blue paper towel and um, and then uh, that kind of like makes your canvas tiny bit on microscopic level uh, smoother if you're using oil prime canvas you don't need to do that it's smooth enough and I still like to work on canvas uh, versus panels and um, and in this case I use the pre-toned canvas and you see when we paint uh, we have good uh, amount of water or uh, sky which is relatively flat so you have that rough kind of like brush strokes as you see reflections of the boats on the foreground or even on, on the background and then you have this flat uh, surface of water which gives an excellent contrast a pleasing combination of, um, of variation of texture not only colors not only values but texture variation is important too Uh, Shirley uh, from Cape Ann, Massachusetts. That's I'm, I'm glad that you are here. And Barbara, um, yes, I so far missed your last week. Love the subject matter tonight. Thank you. You're very welcome. I'm doing this, and uh, I, I was when I was driving around. I said I gotta, uh, I gotta do a recording. And um, even though we painted uh, water scenery before, 
but now I'm ready uh, I already have found uh, not to be at the big hustle to be able to do a recording and not spending like a lot of time to be able to deliver it at pretty decent uh, dynamics and quality so wind and there is uh, always some uh, work happening in, in those cottages along the water so you, you of course you hear that noise around but I hope you can hear my uh, voice well enough so what I can do I can increase a little bit uh, my microphone sound uh, I want you to give me some sort of feedback if you can hear me well uh, my my comments my voice over uh, please put uh, like exclamation uh, mark on your in your chat room at least those who is able to participate in chat uh, you 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 can let me know I do not know exactly how many people we have there uh, just give me a second I think I'll be able to do that uh, it's usually uh, the number of people who are attending uh, these sessions between 20 to 40 and uh, like it's pretty good a number if, if I'm doing demo in audience where I have let's say outside standing there and having 20 25 30 people around that's I mean in scale of uh, YouTube you would think oh no it's not a bit too much at the same time imagine this this is happening I'm sitting there you are sitting there you're watching I'm watching what I'm showing over there and I'm talking that's a real demo and uh, you can ask your questions and uh, you can watch this video on bigger um, screen and it's probably even better uh, than like when you watch it in audience in uh, art association like you can come during the break closer but that's pretty much it uh, otherwise you see it in, at much smaller scale yes uh, when I was painting uh, the sky was changing and as you see here on the left side is photograph that was uh, how initially idea of painting came to me and the boats in the background they constantly move they turn to the right to the left and again it was windy day and there was like no 10 minutes when they've been standing in the same position it's make it makes process of painting a little challenging it's what you're gonna do yes and I'm trying to do some contour um, effect on my clouds as well of course, I was using some uh, cerulean blue for the uh, blue sky and warmed up with some uh, small amount of cadmium lemon. And also, I think I added a small amount of cadmium orange to um, a little bit desaturate that uh, blue. Because when you look at the sky against the sun, it's, it's not that blue. It's usually opposite side of the sky is deep blue. Uh, but the sun side is light and on photograph and you can see on this photograph the blue blue colors get deeper in reality when I watch it with my uh, eye without any glasses or of course without camera that blues are not so dark and deep that makes a big difference of painting from a photograph and uh, real view. and if you're uh, so many times from photograph and then you have a habit of painting from photograph without paying attention um, I mean when you go outside you may not pay attention to colors which you see in shadows in sky and uh, blue color intensity and so on that I don't I, I think I've been saying that thousand times when you're outside try to catch colors and values as they are don't try to over exaggerate uh, values uh, trying to kill color not to make it too pale in shadows unless you see it that way unless it's foggy or something and not to put it too dark because I see some students are painting with a black paint when you can see that black on photograph you don't see that black usually in a real uh, plein air session William, 
good to see you and uh, from California that's a super Ellie uh, wrote me that uh, she hears me very well and Joan says that she hears me very well that's uh, I'm so glad because I've been really worrying how this session will go with that uh, a lot of noise and yeah Do you think that the uh, image which I have on the left side is, uh, I mean, that what I'm covering there, a small amount of my palette, where I have just one pane of, uh, as you see here, of um, ultramarine blue. There is really nothing else. Let's let's keep it like that. So um, this part of the video I think will be the longest uh, because once we did block in um, I will now will go as you see like the shadow under these like kind of front boats are I mean I took main value I did the main value of it and colors and then like main color maybe one or two another but there are many more colors and like many many more um, like nuances I will try during this part of uh, painting process to find those nuances again I will spend pretty good amount of time uh, for texture representation just for uh, more fun during this uh, during this uh, webinar And of course, um, if I've been doing this step two for my painting, I would not really pay much attention of, to show right shape for those clouds which I'm working on. I just would do a couple of lines, and if I need those shapes, I would better take my sketchbook and do step three. I would do kind of best uh, clouds uh, which I want to see in my final painting then um, I would maybe do more careful uh, drawing of uh, more precise uh, drawing of those boats in foreground and that boat on the, on the background and those on the right that side because that would be much more difficult and, and being outside that's not the reason why I'm then in the studio you can spend four or five hours maybe working on this view and uh, or how uh, I've been taught by my um, also my teachers and my other uh, Russian uh, painters like it's a part of the uh, learning process in Russia as um, as it, I mean the tradition of, and the way as they teach in Russia is pretty much the same of course the school of St. Petersburg and Moscow change and those who are in Crimea it's different those who are like say in Ural uh, region um, in Kazan it, they, they are all different you can see that by usually by color palette the northern schools are have more gray and darker palette and that's how it is down there a Crimean uh, school let's say Bato is well known one of the uh, followers of that style it's a lot of kind of texture thing in bright colors and uh, and also yes maybe if you did block in you took your field study home and you can with a good drawing maybe with a little bit of use of photograph on the bigger canvas 16 by 20 you can stretch it up find nice lines and everything spend an hour for your drawing and then um, on paper then on maybe transfer very well your drawing to your canvas or to canvas before and then you can do that block in let it dry and if you find the time and weather and both sitting the same way which quite often is a problem go in and finish painting on site so with the bigger brushes so don't miss opportunity if it's possible to paint outside on bigger canvas but um, 
quite often what happens we think oh i cannot do that and i do not know how to do on smaller scale or i'm not ready for that or i don't have time i think it will take too much i don't have a confidence my painting which i did before doesn't look like a good painting it was a pain to look at it after and then that blocks you anxiety in like in confidence nothing happens no progress we kind of regress because skill and uh, which you acquired maybe with painting day by day or year by year if you stop painting you're kind of progressing you're losing that skill like, like if you're a sports person you train you have good muscles then for two years you don't do any physical training then your muscles are not as good anymore it will be easier to pick up but I mean, you're regressing so um, Yes, trying to uh, treat this uh, field study as a painting. As you see, when I was doing my first part, I've been holding my brush like in the middle of the brush. Uh, this is a full length one. And now, when I work on smaller details and getting closer to the end, my fingers getting closer to the tip of the brush because I want more control. Also, the mall stick. Uh, could be helpful again still where uh, like I'm holding my brush because painting is small and I don't want to do any mistakes at this stage when I already apply second maybe third layer on the same spot I want to destroy the whole structure and lift uh, paint from lower layers uh, I yes I I keep my fingers closer to the to the tip of the brush where the paint and all action is happening. Yeah, at the so base of that uh, background boat is darker. When I did my first brush strokes, it was I mean I couldn't do all nuances. At the same time, I need to bring it to the balance. I mean that shadow cannot be darker than the shadow under boats on the foreground. So when you feel that you work on these like values uh, coordination, I would say maybe it's worth to define how dark will be a uh, shadow under foreground uh, boats. I also like that the smaller boat, the motor boat behind that yacht, is a darker, and also has like has big contrast with that uh, dark uh, saw grass. Gives a more feeling of the light. I didn't do all details yet, and right now it's like jumping from uh, background. So we'll need to find the way how to keep it uh, behind. Also, when I was painting, uh, the water was, I mean, that was a tide coming in. So, um, so the water level was changing. After I did this painting, I did uh, also a painting just separately of this uh, foreground motorboat with this uh, blue cover over I guess, the control part of this boat and um, this painting and painting of that single boat and then later on i'm going to put them available online and before uh, father's day i will have a special sale where i will cover and pay all uh, shipping handling packaging expenses and you can buy it without frame if you want it if you have a great frame or you can uh, also You know what? I think um, I think we are at the uh, wrong video. Don't we? Yeah, I think that's where we have to uh, go to. Yeah. So uh, that background, 
that background uh, boat. I want to give some details to it, but since it will be uh, kind of like more defined, I do it because it's in the background. I cannot do it after I do it now, and then on the foreground, I need to put at least some fine lines and reflections on the uh, foreground. Uh, yacht, I mean that background yacht which is standing before it, like in front of it, uh, from my uh, point. What I put there, mast, I'll put some gear, I'll put whatever extra mast actually, the second one on the left, uh, that the background fishing boat will be on its own uh, place. Right now it looks too. Um, it's jumping out from its background. I usually pay attention to that. Thing. As you see, adding that uh, light line on those boats on the right added extra contrast and also sharp edges, and that also give a feeling. Now uh, these boats are closer to me. They're brighter. If you can see them uh, better and the brightest light sharpest edges so it should be on foreground boats that is why I'm working on uh, them now as well I'm not using absolutely same paint so it should be a little cooler a little bit darker in the, in, in the boats which are in the distance and like warmer and brighter um, even if it's pretty much the same white on our painting it's brighter on the on, on the foreground i'm trying to be not total descriptive with my boats at the same time i don't want to leave them uh, quite abstract right now for me they look pretty nice for study but we are not doing just study we're doing a webinars painting just small painting So Barbara gave me feedback that she hears me well enough, very well, in fact, that's great to hear that. And Carol um, Jeffries uh, from CT says that the noise comes and goes, love to watch you paint. And uh, Maria Dolores from Boston, good evening, so far very challenging painting. Uh, Yes, it's challenging. Uh, boats are difficult because they are shapes. Um, I mean, tree can be difficult. It's difficult by complexity of, uh, I mean, by number of branches, you need to handle shape and so on. But anyway, uh, the problem with the boat, it has curves and those curves are symmetric on the right and on the left. Since we never see them, paint them symmetric, but we know that it's in, like in the shape of the boat is symmetric watching it under angle you think if you did your right side of the boat this way your left should be appropriately curved different because it's not straight view but give a feeling that it's there is a symmetry that makes it challenging that was my observation and uh, and uh, everyone who just start painting boats fails uh, doing a right and then so wait a minute let me understand with pencil not just with brush how things work here you have to find the axis of symmetry and then uh, you can check yourself uh, that's how it works for me so what I'm doing now which is also challenging is those sparkles on water or diamonds especially uh, it's a little challenging when your canvas is still uh, wet um, if you have a very good uh, mind brain of a kind of planning and your painting is a little bigger uh, when you do that water where those sparkles are sitting on you can add more of a medium which uh, dries faster not oil of course uh, I'll instead of oil but the, the galket or that liquid or uh, maybe if you paint with a traditional Russian mix of the uh, varnish, um, it's a little bit of oil and um, turp. So a varnish, especially outside, let it dry quite fast. So it settles fast and then um, adding, I mean painting over it, 
those, those sparkles is a relatively easy uh, thing. In my case, my paint is still wet. You see, I apply, okay, um, I apply my paint and it doesn't really uh, work very well. It gets mixed, uh, mixed uh, with a lower layer. Also, again, looking for a better texture. I'm trying to uh, create separation between uh, brush strokes. And also, um, if you look careful at my palette now and later on, I create variations of those white. So uh, some of them are like more yellowish, some of them are like more on pink size uh, side, and I pretty much never using uh, that pure white. Just maybe for tiny few spots when you want to show uh, the most intensity of glow. Not glow, but the shining right in the middle of the sun or the uh, right in the middle, just small uh, area of the whatever highlights reflection on metal or a teapot or something. And here, um, adding white, titanium white out of two as the, the full brush strokes quite often looks dead. So Susan uh, Foster wrote me that she loved this composition. Um, I knew that you will enjoy it. Uh, I think boats, since the level of water was changing, uh, like at the foreground, they look normal. But I mean, if I do final painting, I would try to really see exactly where they are sitting. So the base of the boat should be on exactly flat should give a feeling that it's sitting on flat horizontal surface. So uh, Marie Dolores asking when you do plein air do you keep dedicated brushes for darks, lights and warm uh, cool colors? I try to, it doesn't really work much. Um, I mean that doesn't really work very well uh, for me but I guess uh, that's also scale with some discipline and like when you form it as a, I would say even like a habit let's say if you have a couple of brush same size um, and when you need to I mean, I mean when you need to grab brush for something uh, or you need to go from let's say painting trees towards painting uh, and of sky you would use different brushes that would be absolutely appropriate when you wash your brushes you see how much pigment you have there even after you tap it to solvent and and uh, squeezed it like many times there's still a lot of like say, pigment especially green ones is sitting between those uh, brush and hair and also what's uh, really uh, important share you that so far I did not find any better cleaning uh, solution at least for the first part of cleaning brushes is then uh, turpentine natural it works very well cleans even like a relatively dry stains from any surface and it's oil and that oil is like with warm water it's washable it's amazing uh, substance it's oil and the water soluble could be anything be better and let's say if uh, sometimes I had some my tins for the solvent and the solvent that's all it is let's say I had a galkit there or varnish and stayed there for a long time and like I tried to have water there for two weeks maybe I thought from from metal uh, from yes from tin uh, that film dry film will come off it doesn't work I tried with let's say with a gamzol or with acetone doesn't really work I put this uh, uh, terpenoid natural and it's I mean any uh, oxidized film of 
oil or varnishes it's coming off well enough uh, at least for those paints which we are using while we uh, paint I do not know will it work well for sprays or something else most likely not uh, but for uh, something which creates that durable film due to oxidation of oil um, it, it works very well and it's so gentle um, yes and uh, and if I have any stains from my from paint uh, or even especially from paraffins on let's say let's say from candle uh, on, on my fabric yeah uh, something like a uh, OMS, odorless mineral spirit, works very well, much better than any acetone. And it doesn't really bother uh, dye, uh, which was used to dye uh, fabric. Unless you rub it uh, like hard and then it just mechanically remove, uh, let's say, jeans uh, dye from uh, fabric. Fabric. I can call it like French way. Fabric. Fabric. Okay, what's happening here? Finally, I think I found the way how to paint those reflections. You know, it's it's a uh, it takes time, and um, of course, I could just kind of put those sparkles as flowers on the field, kind of here and there, some amount, and at times it looks like that. But still, I try to make it somehow giving a feeling of there is some kind of waves, maybe, maybe that boat when it um, moves and uh, starts to kind of like a swinging from side to side. Um, it's uh, under the wind, giving that um, some sort of waves. That way, uh, this reflection look natural for water uh, surface. I mean, those sparkles on water, and also it gives a uh, kind of like only a, a line uh, along uh, along the kind of lines of composition. You see, all these boats are all pointed uh, towards the right far angle. Not exactly, but you know that's the where the harbor uh, kind of mouth is. So where the boats are going, uh, the other boats which are uh, sitting in the middle of this uh, harbor and the stream, they're all uh, kind of pointed towards that right uh, far uh, kind of direction. So the Carol uh, Jeffries asking, can you show us the paintings you do from these studies? I would love to see the finished painting too, if you do them. Um, I, um, I've been focused uh, a lot recently uh, painting those uh, smaller ones and do some recordings um, for, uh, for you and for classes. But once I have something which would worth attention, I would definitely uh, We'll, we'll, we'll show it during my webinars. Uh, in June, we are, uh, I'm still with you. July and August could be more challenging uh, because I will be away covering uh, a few areas. I will be painting in uh, Maryland, Easton, plein air Easton. Then I'm going to Wisconsin, uh, Door County. Then I'll be driving back through Chicago. We'll stop in Ohio. I have a commission there in uh, Pittsburgh and Pennsylvania and then uh, like I will be home for a week and then we go to and then we go to uh, we, I mean I go to Port Clyde Maine to paint for a week uh, with uh, with friend artists invited by Mary Erickson and then uh, at the Nanata group and then uh, for a week I'll, one week I'll spend with my family uh, on one of the lakes in Maine so uh, during these travels, I cannot guarantee that I will have um, good recordings. The best I, I think I'll be able to do if I post on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. this video. You will watch it not as a live session, but it will be available. So when you come at 7, uh, turn it on, it you will see that published. And now then you can really watch it since that moment. There will be no chat room though. You can you will be able just to leave comments below. So, uh, but 
Let me if I will find already. my recordings of these videos like I'm showing today uh, of decent interesting um, has been reached. subject and reach. relatively good quality yeah, you will see them here. posted uh, I will try to do in advance maybe extra five six uh, videos maybe not each of them will be for an hour and a half maybe shorter ones like 40 minutes 45 minutes with less of me talking in the beginning at the end but I will keep you posted also um, big idea is for me to show you and maybe involve you into the project of that challenges you probably have seen challenges by strata and even books like a paint a painting a day like 30 paintings a day like to paint the entire month I would like to maybe try to show you how it's possible to survive and we can do that together so I will have a posted maybe uh, maybe not 30 for a month but let's say at least maybe like 20 paintings a month so five paintings a week for four weeks and I will give you every time uh, some idea that can be done as as a paid course after I finish my uh, magical winter uh, course today I've been able to retrieve all my videos and with uh, again I'm trying new computer and I can put final voice over and publish it uh, soon and then after that I don't want to touch any other uh, projects before I finish that because that's my um, was my promise people got it for uh, uh, invested I uh, gave me some money and um, to have it finished and then after it's done for those who will be buying it after will they will pay a full price it will be more than uh, it's available now for 47 dollars uh, as something which will come up later again it took longer than I was planning it to happen but you know I knew my, my best thing rarely happens from my first attempt and thank you for those who uh, believed in me and trust me uh, that and again if someone wants to have money back I'll, I just will send you a check uh, for what you paid uh, to me but I'm glad that 99% uh, of you did not uh, did not come up with that idea so you have freedom to do so but thank you for your uh, loyalty and trusting that I'm not going to live it is as is so let's see what's happening on our um, field uh, you see that there is a, a red uh, sail on one of the yachts and even though it's red you know the brain tells me it's red but it's not red if you look even on this photograph you see it's a complex kind of like a purplish reddish with a a warm reflexes from the bottom with a cooler but sharp line of highlights on it so I'll do it like that way also the edge of that grass I'm trying to soften it and uh, light a little bit change the uh, even like an hour during this painting process sun goes higher and you can of course uh, calculate how uh, higher it goes it's getting close to summer and even though we live quite much to north from the uh, equator anyway sun is quite high it's not exactly 90 degree above but I think it's getting close to I would say over 70 and um, if we divide 360 for 24 hours that will be what about what, 5 degree no. 60 so 30 for 12 yeah 15 degree an hour uh, having it's not going straight through equator I would say about 10 uh, degree every hour uh, sun changes and gets higher yeah at some points I had to hold my uh, tripod not to be blown away and at the end finally my my hat fell to water I had to really go and as you see on photograph there are some stairs I can go down and uh, that happened uh, like 
just maybe like an hour before all that area got covered with water I've been able to get my head off the water so I think at the end I'll show you no I won't be able to show you that uh, precious moment let me actually uh, see maybe I, I will it's it's a uh, it's not fun. It's a lot, a lot of fun. Just uh, that deep blue cover I had dilemma so this boat which is in the foreground it's big enough I mean it's small boat but compare comparing to the that yacht in the background it's 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 uh, it's big enough and that blue mm, like kind of intensively blue cobalt blue uh, cover it was really pulling a lot of attention and compositionally I did not want it to be like having being so important uh, as those boats in the background so I diminished its size and um, actually cover sides because color wise the white uh, boats do not pull much attention I really like how uh, shadow and reflection of this boat looks on the foreground but not the uh, top part of it so uh, I, that is why you see the shape of this boat has been changed uh, by me to diminish its significance also uh, you know the waves of reflection been going back and forth one way another way sometimes less of those waves sometimes more I've been looking for a special way how to present them um, and I've been working a lot on that and maybe that was one of the reasons why I decided to repeat uh, this painting of this boat again and you've seen that on Facebook and that painting will be available for purchase um, on zufar.com I think I'll do descriptions uh, tonight and if you want to watch it starting tomorrow which is a uh, Friday uh, June 31st um, so you can do so as well and if you'd like to buy it uh, I'd be happy I'd be happy to have it sold to you uh, if you want to buy this one that's probably even better because you can see the way as it was painted and then you can look at the painting and see every tiny square millimeter on it see exactly how brush stroke went and um, that would be even more precious to have both video and painting video is available for everyone the painting will be just yours <laughs> video quality of on screen of smartphone I have a iPhone uh, XS and uh, no yes XS uh, it looks great but when I watch it on a bigger screen let's say on like, on my uh, desktop it's still not perfect uh, it's get broadcasted uh, wirelessly the whole idea of having this software is that uh, be able to broadcast it from my iPad all this entire thing it's just kind of you know same thing as a painting it takes a lot of repetition to get that skill and not to worry that uh, you can fail just because you don't remember or you don't know how things work now I'm trying to do that mast 
and once I put this little gear and that mast, uh, my this uh, this yacht will look that it's closer to me than um, that fishing boat in the background, which has more contrast, higher contrast with that um, shadow on grass and so on. challenging uh, to do a uh, recording and paint at the same time but um, came out well enough I'm so glad that now uh, those mobile uh, phone cameras are having a lot of uh, stabilization so it really did worth to uh, invest to buy uh, iPhone excess now uh, for this uh, YouTube videos and uh, Painting water, of course, painting it, looking how another uh, artist did handle that in the museum. I mean, the top uh, artist, how did that? Uh, it's one of the favorite subjects uh, in Russian art as well. branches of Volga River uh, a lot uh, mainly Don so um, they you can see how it was uh, handled how complex is color it's just not graphical shadow and wave of course you can see how painted the water was painted on the works of That water, like a river size uh, water bodies, I really get inspired uh, by Russian artists of the Soviet period mainly, not even like on works of Levitan, but more of the, like a Soviet uh, Russian script. A number of miracles and landscapes which is uh, free of any propaganda with the skills which were. Developed, uh, I think from mid of 19th century uh, to like middle of 20th century, uh, that was maintained and is still maintained. Not so many many artists uh, follow that traditions. Many uh, go to style of what's called salon art. Brighter, a little bit brighter colors, a little bit lighter colors, more pleasing colors. Instead of finding uh, just better composition and paint it as you see it, doing maybe some little changes, but then colors and values be absolutely true. So painting would look as it's painted at the same time, color-wise would be so impressive. So as yeah, I'm working on those little details. You see all those adding those uh, lines with a big contrast, I mean with the sharper edges really um, makes that little magic. It doesn't actually take much time if you have enough skill and skill comes with practice. But adding those extra lines so it has that uh, wow effect. Before it was just like a bigger shapes and then few lines and wow now it looks like a boat and you can see it was made of has a lot of light on it. Light is bright. You can see the water line and I'm trying to finish those uh, boats and then I can focus on my uh, lower part of the painting. 
there's no absolutely not a rigid system what needs to be done first and second uh, when we go and like, work on details. The most important that the painting is balanced. What's on foreground looks like on foreground. What sits on flat surface looks like it sits on flat surface. What has uh, waves on water should look like waves on water. If you have any questions, please ask. I'll be happy to answer. I cannot say exactly how much time we have in this video. I think still more than 10 minutes. photograph you can see there is a floater which is right behind this boat I did not paint it because on this photograph even on this photograph that's floater that kind of like a ball on the water surface uh, I think where you can um, anchor your boat to it's just sitting right like behind this boat and looks like this is a you know, the Christmas tree decoration sitting on, on top of the boat which is not true and of course I avoid uh, painting this kind of uh, elements which can be deceiving and uh, unless I want to have a very strange feeling or it really works well for composition in this case it's a really I mean even though we work I, I work here in realistic manner but I try to avoid some crazy things which will not be understood and uh, correctly doesn't matter how well I would paint that a floater because it's in the wrong place uh, against the boat it's it will always look very strange So adding details here and there. Hello. Perfect day today, huh? It is. No uh, reflection yes. of water and foreground consists of several layers. You can see that well Thank on you. works of uh, and and resort. It's usually at least three a gradation of. Uh, it's usually a reflection of sky or maybe clouds and uh, and then uh, like right above you maybe off sky which is like away from you maybe like uh, on, on the background because of the waves they're curving and they catch light from there too and also some, some object uh, is if there's any objects around it could be a boat reflection if it's like in right position and also uh, since closer to our feet closer like by the floor intensity of light reflected goes down because more of the uh, light get absorbed and less reflected so this way the, uh, the, the foreground water it looks darker and also gets the color of water itself if it's not very clear or the, uh, the color of the bottom trying to position, uh, trying to uh, find a right position for those uh, sparkles. I wish I could uh, fast forward this part of the video, uh, but for some of you uh, could be uh, curious. I, it's always, a, it's, it's like an art, <laughs> you <laughs> also, like art of finding where sparkles supposed to be. Also, as you see, I put, let's say, brush stroke of sparkle, which is 
very very light uh, mix based on titanium white and then I I also take paint of the water around it and kind of shape it make I make it like a star shape star or two three array star quite often since painting getting gets close to uh, finishing I do whatever changes or correction wherever I see let's say reflection of the boat should be better or some lines small open should be added or contrast I will show you at the end I think uh, how this painting looks uh, close see there is a reflection of the mast if possible it's better not to forget about that so let's see I don't need this well, I think it looks like I still need it huh? color which have been placed in the beginning but often need some extra correction not only uh, shape wise so spur strokes needs to be corrected to improve lines and so on but also intensity of the the light oh, I see the wind I guess is getting crazy the sound wow of the uh, wind gusts are is terrible I don't know even shall I talk more or less I don't think you can hear me well uh, talking over this uh, noise we're finishing this uh, stage uh, pretty soon asking what uh, solvent I'm using that is water soluble so uh, solvent for cleaning my brushes or cleaning surfaces I'm using is uh, terpenoid natural not terpenoid uh, odorless but terpenoid natural it has a green label and um, I'm not using it for painting even though it's suitable at smaller amounts I just do not see why I would have to use it as but for cleaning brushes cleaning surfaces uh, it's perfect and it has pretty nice smell I like it because it's made of whatever I think from core of some nuts or it has also some uh, citrus um, uh, fragrance so that was again terpenoid natural don't uh, mix it up uh, not, not mix up with a terpenoid odorless which has a white and blue label both of these terpenoids produced by Weber company American company but so far before I uh, clean my brush with uh, with the soap uh, I clean it 
not with the gamzol and wiping it off i mean and then squishing and removing that paint but uh with terpenoid natural Yes, as I see those, uh, that wind is not all the time as bad, but yes. When I was re-watching this video to see will it be uh, suitable for, uh, for you to show you, uh, I heard the noise was bad. I did actually editing of it and uh, from in iMovie and from iMovie I send it and save for this software, but it really did not, uh, I don't know, it's kind of get lost somewhere. Now, like inside of the iPad, I cannot really retrieve it uh, to show it to you. In that video, I had it a little bit speed up at 1.5 speed, so to have it under uh, one hour length, and also I got all sound down. Unfortunately, it did not happen. <laughs> so, uh, but having it at the regular pace, it has its own benefits, isn't it? On this video, uh, this paint box or easel look pretty large, but again, it's relatively small. So, inner size is it's like 10 by 20 inches. So, outer side is probably a little more than 21 inches long. So, it sits very well on shelf. Of, it just takes so much, so little space in my. Um, my refrigerator the modification which I did I tried to show just briefly uh, last time maybe I will do a few photographs and I will show uh, what exactly I did I added just quick release a uh, plate on one of the sides so I could uh, really attach it to my tripod which I use for other easels uh, for yes for other uh, field easels and also uh, I removed a couple of parts which have been in no use and also I had to decide how I will keep my canvas in place so I added four screws uh, you can see on two screws my uh, canvas is sitting and then another two screws screws uh, like more laterally more to the sides but when I fold this box I needed some kind of had to drill some holes can see holes right above the palette and um, that, that's pretty much all modifications and that a uh, palette which it came with uh, I did not really uh, like it because it has hole for finger and I was not planning to keep this uh, palette in my hands because I already have it sitting well enough so I, I just cut mesonite of this size and uh, I kind of have found a way to keep it without much moving when this case when this box is closed so paints which are uh, squeezed on pallet will not touch or move on other side of the box Stain. Of course, I'm not keeping this painting inside of the box. A wet carrier or any other solution would be uh, the right thing to do. I think Raymar produced a uh, carrier for 5x7. I just want to uh, also find the way which I think I already have an idea of simple invention how to make it on your own uh, that wet 5x7 or any a little bit bigger a canvas 6x8 to uh, be able to carry them safely a lot of things have been invented if 
uh, I come up with some idea it's usually just kind of extension of that idea to a different device what I'm doing right now on canvas actually I as you uh, if you look uh, carefully I with with attention I took my titanium white and I mixed it with a small amount of cadmium orange which it has this very small tinge and then I went in different spot on that most glowing area of those sparkles and I created a variety of those sparkles I have not signed I'm not now uh, most of the time I don't sign my paintings uh, right on site because you know sometimes you bring it home I try not to correct my field studies but since it's not just field study it's a sort of painting sometimes I need to I know, correct some shape or line and uh, if I do so I don't feel that at the time when painting was signed it was complete I would really sign it after I I'm sure that there will be no uh, corrections anymore it doesn't work 100% of time but I try to follow this rule sign it when when it's signed not to come back not to do I mean I should be 100% sure that it's finished painting. how shaky is uh, my easel because of the wind the wind was terrible um, it's not just because of easel is shaky it's pretty uh, sturdy and steady but at the at the ocean wind can be pretty bad because of the open space with that work on texture if you want to grab and use that technique for your bigger paintings so it looks like water and you can say that the water is kind of grayish so that combination of larger and smaller brush strokes the finer lines give a feeling that there's some kind of bigger waves not the bigger tide waves but these bigger waves and small tiny kind of distortion of surface which I can represent with a finer lines those who took my workshop uh, live how to paint water I think that was a year before I really explained that and um, and I think when we did the winter uh, scenery painting in February I also explained how I usually paint water Yes, I, I really, uh, I really look forward to, to tell all my tricks in my online courses. I love doing video editing, but uh, five hours, six hours of video editing, it takes more than I could really uh, was able to handle within that period of time. yeah uh, light so another uh, tricky thing how ref I kind of reflection and shadow on the water or in behind the boat because it's floating there is this gap between base of the boat and the bottom of the of the lake or harbor or a river there is some space and it has that water has transparency to paint that is a um, it's not easy thing it's, it takes it takes practice it takes a lot of observation and trying uh, work on it and then uh, evaluation did it work well did it work right
think uh, from here we can go and see uh, how this thing looked. Uh, let me remove my uh, photograph from here. So you see the water. So that's how it looked. At least that was my first painting of that day. And um, so I'm glad that most of you watched this live, especially uh, last maybe 15 minutes. That was more about details of finishing it up. And uh, it would take a lot of patience. And most of you had that patience. I see how dedicated you are. But anyways, if you like this video, please, of course, uh, subscribe and uh, like the video or at least like it if you don't want to be subscribed and um, kind of being able to um, see one of your extra vote in the number of subscribers to my channel and also i i also would like to remind that the confidentartist.com is the main sponsor by ideas and uh, financially actually of uh, my uh, youtube channel and We'll see you then next Thursday. If you have any questions, I'll be uh, happy to answer to them. I still will be in chat for another uh, few minutes. Otherwise, thank you for being with me and uh, we'll see you next Thursday. And that will be already uh, June, June 5th. Okay, bye-bye.